Hi, I'm Vinny Hurt. I work for a company called Carp Solutions, which was founded by Shemek Bear, who is also a professor at the University of Minnesota. And the results I'm gonna present in a little bit are based on data collected by us at Carp Solutions and uh, by his lab at the University of Minnesota. So for those who aren't familiar, box nets are box-shaped nets. They have bottom and four sides and are open on the top. Uh, there are several ways of using box nets. I'm gonna describe how we do it, which is actually covered by a patent, but you'll get the general idea of how box nets work. So we put posts in the water around the perimeter of the net. Uh, and then there is a line on each post that connects to the top of the net. The line runs up the post, across some pulleys, back down the other side where it is attached to a weight. And we often enclose those weights in protective sleeves just for safety reasons. Most of the time, the, the sides and bottom of the net lay flat on the bottom of the lake. Um, and when we go to set the nets, uh, we raise the weights up to the top of the posts. Uh, and then they're held into place um, with special trigger devices uh, so we put a little loop in the line uh, and that gets attached to a special, uh, specially designed screw on the triggers uh, and that holds the weights up. And then <clears throat> we trip the nets um, using a remote control. It's like the key fob on your car or a garage door opener. Um, you hit the button from a distance. The, the trigger, there's a little motor inside. It turns the screw, which then releases the line. The weight falls, which then pulls uh, the top of the net up above the water, trapping the fish inside. Uh, and so uh, the advantage here is that you can trip these nets from a distance without disturbing the, the, the carp. We minimize bycatch uh, by using fairly large mesh size. And we actually use a couple different um, mesh sizes depending on the situation. Uh, but for the most part, you know, carp are pretty large fish. So by using large mesh size, smaller, uh, Species can just swim right through the net, um, but you still catch the carp. Uh, and then we also bait with cracked corn. Uh, carp really like cracked corn, but very few other species, at least in North America, will, will touch the stuff. And so that also really helps reduce bycatch. And then we are typically tripping the nets and catching the carp at night. That's when they typically are most actively feeding. Um, and a, a lot of native species just aren't active at night. Um, and because box nets merely contain the fish, they don't harm the fish in any way, uh, any bycatch we do get, we can just release alive and we get very, 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 very low uh, mortality rates on, on bycatch. So before box netting, typically what we do is we go out and we electrofish for carp. Um, we will collect a small subset of the population and mark them either with fin clips and or with pit tags. And pit tags are just little uh, microchips that we inject in the abdominal cavity of the carp. Uh, they're much like a, a microchip that you would put in a dog or a cat. Um, these pit tags have unique identification numbers. They don't have a battery or anything. Um, they're passive. And so we, we found pit tagged carp that were tagged years before uh, and the, the tags still work. Um, so they last a long time. And then by marking carp and then once we recapture them, we can get population estimates. And the pit tags have an advantage uh, in that what we like to do is put an antenna in the, in the box net, in the center of the box net around the bait. Um, and that antenna is hooked up to a reader system. Uh, so we can detect when tagged carp come into the net. Uh, and our systems are connected to cell modems that you know can upload the data to the cloud, to the web, um, and we can watch activity in the net. And when, when carp activity is the highest is when we like to go out and trip the nets. Once we trip the nets, then a small crew of people can go out in a boat and go through the net, remove the carp, release the bycatch, uh, and then the nets can be either taken down or reset and tripped again. When we remove the carp, they're typically anesthetized and disposed of, but we will weigh and measure a subset. And then from that, we can do biomass estimates both before um, box netting and then after box netting. 
So biomass of carp is important because some research done by Shemek actually uh, has shown that if you can get common carp biomass below 100 kilograms per hectare, water quality uh, really improves and habitat in improves. So turbidity goes down, um, aquatic vegetation starts to come back, uh, native fish populations rebound. Uh, so that, that 100 kilograms per hectare is kind of the management threshold that we use. Um, and then what's interesting is that once you get below that threshold, if there's a healthy uh, bluegill population in a lake, the bluegill can typically eat enough carp larva to keep recruitment essentially zero. And the bluegill themselves can maintain a carp biomass below 100 kilograms per hectare. Um, and so, you know, if, if the carp biomass is above that, the bluegill just can't keep up, so to speak. Um, but if the biomass is below that 100 kilogram per hectare, uh, bluegill can keep it there indefinitely. So I want to go over a few examples of some lakes we've done recently, box netted recently. Uh, these are just different kinds of lakes, so you kind of get a sense of the results we get uh, in a variety of different kinds of lakes. So the first example is Long Lake. It's in the north metro area of the Twin Cities uh, in Minnesota. It's 70 hectares. It's very much a suburban location. Uh, so you got lots of uh, nutrient inputs from um, lawn fertilizers and things like that. Uh, and carp biomass is really high, 671 kilograms per hectare. We box netted twice, uh, once in 2017 and then again last year in 2020. Uh, in 2017, it was very, very minimum effort really. We put in three nets. Uh, we pulled each net once. Uh, we estimated a population of almost 12,000 carp in the lake. Uh, and just with those three poles, we removed 29% of the, the carp population. That's about 1,100 carp per pole, which that's that's a good pole. 1100 carp is a good pole. Uh, and then in 2020, we increased our effort a little bit. We put in six nets and pulled each net twice. Uh, and we re removed an additional almost 7,000 carp. Um, and that's, that was about 572 carp per pole, which again, that, that's pretty good numbers. Uh, what you often will see is the first pole, you'll get a lot of carp. And then because you've removed a bunch of carp from the system, the you know, subsequent poles, second and third poles, you'll get, you'll get fewer and fewer carp. Uh, but so with that starting 671 kilograms per hectare, we, we were able to reduce the biomass down to about 300 or uh, 537. Uh, and bio, bycatch was really low in Long Lake, 0.03%. Uh, Essentially, we caught <laughs> three non-carp uh, species or two two species three individuals two channel catfish and one northern pike uh, another example kind of a an extreme example is this very small lake called wolf lake it's in south central minnesota uh, only 8.4 hectares in size and um, carp biomass is is pretty high there 472 kilograms per hectare and we did some box netting in 2020 uh, put in three nets and pulled each net twice so that's that's pretty low effort really uh, we estimated a population a starting population of about 1300 carp and those six net poles we were able to remove 424 about 31 percent of the population and we reduced the biomass down to 325 kilograms per hectare and there was no bycatch whatsoever. Another example, Sweeney Lake. It's again kind of in the metro area of the Twin Cities, um, kind of intermediate in size from the last two examples, 27 hectares. And uh, carp biomass is much lower in Sweeney. It's, uh, it was, uh, well, at the beginning of our efforts, it was 122 kilograms per hectare. So just above that threshold, we put in five nets and pulled each net four times. We estimated a starting population of about a thousand carp and we were able to remove about 43 percent of them just with those 20 poles uh, and we reduced the biomass down to 68 kilograms per hectare so below that threshold um, so it really probably starting this year next year we should start seeing uh, water quality and habitat improve in sweeney uh, Bycatch, again, was low in Sweeney, 1.1%. Uh, 
And then the final example is a big project that we've been doing over multiple years in Lake Allegan in Michigan. Uh, Lake Allegan is on the Kalamazoo River between Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids. So the Kalamazoo, there's a series of dams, one of which forms Lake Allegan. Uh, it's a very large lake, over 700 hectares, and carp biomass uh, at the beginning of this year we estimated at 284 kilograms per hectare so that's it's a that's fairly high biomass of carp so between 2018 and 2020 we've removed over 62,000 carp um, and each year we we've been increasing our efforts so this past year 2021 um, this past summer kind of starting in june going into october we put in 26 box nets and pulled each about 12 times um, they didn't all get pulled the exact same number of times but it was a little over 300 total net pulls uh, the population estimate at the beginning of 2021 was 112,000 carp and we were able to remove over 50 percent of them uh, 61,000 carp just this year and you know that, that that's about well, 199 carp per pole but uh, that number is a little low in that uh, kind of later in the season September October carp act, the water temperatures had dropped carp activity had really slowed down and so we didn't get very many carp uh, late September into October uh, but earlier in the season June July we were getting a lot more carp uh, sometimes over a thousand fish per pole, but typically several hundred. After this year, we have re we've gotten the biomass, carp biomass, down to 130 kilograms per hectare, which is real close to that threshold. So we're almost there. Uh, bycatch was, for us anyway, high this year, 6.2 percent, um, and that's because we got a whole bunch of spot tail shiners and I'm not sure why it's the first year we really got spot tail shiners as as um, bycatch part of it is we we put in some nets this year with um, some smaller mesh um, but I don't think that accounts for all of it I'm not sure why there were so many spot tail shiners but uh, second most common bycatch this year was channel catfish which in previous years was by far the most common bycatch uh, and in previous years, you know, 2019, we were at 1.7% bycatch. And in 2020, it was 2.1% uh, bycatch. And in both of those years, it was almost exclusively channel catfish. I mean, we would get a couple individuals of some other species, but uh, channel catfish are by far the most common in, in, in this lake and in, and in a lot of lakes as well. So in conclusion, uh, box netting is efficient and effective. Uh, it doesn't really take a whole lot in terms of manpower uh, and time to remove a lot of carp from uh, lakes and it, it does so with very low bycatch. Thanks for watching.